Hi everyone, my name is Noam from tuneformedia.com and today we're going to make our very own upright piano sound. So here's an example just to give you the main idea of how it's going to sound like. First of all, we have to understand what makes an upright piano sound like it is when it's recorded. First thing is that the dampers, which is the tiny hummers that keep the strings muted, are much closer to the microphones than the way we recorded on a grand piano. So in, a, in an upright piano, it has much more presence than a grand piano. In an upright piano, we have a smaller cabinet, so we, we have less high-end than compare it to, uh, to an open grand piano. So people don't know how piano works. Um, each key generally strikes three strings and in order to make it a little bit more uh, home piano, affordable piano, something like that, um, I'm going to show you how to detune a little bit the piano so it will sound more realistic and it will have much more reflections inside the cabinet. All right, so I'm starting a new session in Logic. Um, I'm using Logic Pro X, but you can definitely use Logic 9 or previous versions, as long as you have the EXS24, the sampler. So we'll start with the two channels, two, two software instrument channels. And one is going to be for the piano sound, and the other one is going to be for the dampers sound. And of course, at the end, you can make it like a track stack or something like that. So to, to make it like a master, one master track and to save it as one preset. So let's begin with the first sound. The first sound will be the piano, of course. And let's load up the EXS24. The cool thing about the EXS24 that it already has a pretty good sample piano. So we're going to choose from the factory acoustic pianos I like to choose, to choose the, the Steinway piano because the Steinway piano is pretty dry and yet it's a very detailed piano sound. So I like to use it. I like to change it. And this is the piano preset and it sounds like that. Okay, um, now it's a little, it's too open, it's like a grand piano, and we like to close it a little bit so it will become more upright piano. So I'm going to choose, instead of 12 dB low pass filter, I'm going to choose the 18. If you want to go all the way to 24, 24 will close the sound and it will become like a mellow piano, soft piano. Um, but I like to choose the, the 18 dB, it's not too extreme. Now we'll set the filter to 20%, something like that, it's pretty good. And you can choose fat, it will make, make it sound a little better. <laughs> Another thing about the upright piano, uh, it has less velocity range than the grand piano, so I'm going to lift it a little bit to around Minus 22, something like that. It's pretty good. And, okay. And now it sounds something like that. Okay, cool. So we have the piano sound, now we're going out from the EXS24 and we're going to make a little bit of adjustments to make it sound more realistic. So in the audio effects I'm going to choose the chorus. Now what the chorus does, it actually duplicates the, the signal and it takes the duplication and sort of re-pitch it in a rate that you set and intensity that you set 
like I think hundred percent is a is a semi tone up and down. Um, so ten even eight percent will be cool. And in the mix we're going to set it to seventy percent. Now what I did is actually to detune the piano a little bit so it will it will become a little bit more realistic and more home like piano and not like a concert tuned piano. So now it sounds like that. And if you want to go crazy, you can set it up to 30%, maybe 40 and it will become like a detuned piano and it will be something like that. But we'll leave it an 8%. Okay, now we pretty much have the piano sound so we can come back later and change a bit of the, the EQ maybe to, to, to make the cabinet sound more real. Uh, let's go to the dampers. Second track is the dampers. This is the cool part. All right, so we're going to put another EXS24 for the dampers. Now, here's the cool trick here. We're going to select the upright jazz bass. This is it right from the factory acoust bass, acoustic bass and upright jazz bass. Uh, I found out that if you shape the, the upright bass sound to, be, to become like a damper, it sounds very natural actually. The, it's, it, it reacts to the strings and it sounds like a real piano. So first thing that we're going to do is to, is to short the velocity because Inside a real piano, everything is pretty much mechanical, so we don't have room for velocity, but we do want to leave like a tiny range to make the dampers come a little bit more uh, various and dynamic. So something here, something like that, it's good. Now we're going to cancel all of the adjustments that the upright jazz bass has, and we're going to um change the envelope so we're going to bring down the sustain and make the decay make a short decay like around 100 160 something like that sounds good and now we have something like that all right so now we have like a short upright jazz bass and we we're not looking for for that so we're going to cut almost all of the frequencies so we're going to choose from the LP uh, filters we're going to choose again 18 decibels and I'm gonna put it on 18 18 probably sounds good can even lower it to 16 Okay. I don't know if you can hear it, but now we have a pretty good damper sound. So now what we need to do is to go to edit and select groups. Now we see everything in groups. Now you see here the trigger. So in the trigger, because dampers, we, we hear the dampers only when we release the key because in a mechanical piano, in a real piano, when we release the key, the damper hit the, the string and then mute it. So we want to hear it right after we leave the key. So we need to change the trigger instead of key down to key release. So everything here will be key release. And make sure you can you check. And in the time, this is actually the time it's the time between the moment we release the key to the moment we, we hear the sample. There's a few milliseconds in a real piano. Um, 
when we release the key until we hear the damper. So it's around 170 milliseconds, so it's very fast, but it still has some time. So we're going to choose it to change it to 170. And now we want to save it on a new preset because we don't want to uh, affect the upright jazz bass, the great bass that Logic already gives you. Now, you can't see me, but when I press the key, I can't hear nothing, but when I release it, the sound kicks in. Okay, so the last thing is that uh, in a real piano, when we press the sustain pedal, um, actually the dampers, the dampers actually goes back and they're not touching, they're not touching the strings. So uh, when we press the sustain pedal, we're not supposed to hear the dampers. So what we're going to do, it's in, here in the adjustments, we're going to select in the source the sustain pedal and this is going to be control number 64 64 is the index number for uh, sustain pedal the destination is going to be the filter cutoff and we're going to cut it all the way down so now we hear the dampers and when I press you can see me but when I press the sustain pedal I hear nothing, so it's like a real piano. Okay, so the last part of the tutorial. Now we we have now we have damper sound, and the last part is actually to mix between the two, so the dampers won't be too heavy. Uh, you just want to hear it on the background, just like adding a little bit of saturation to the piano. So now we're mixing the piano and the dampers together until you get the right sound that you're looking for. Now, here is an example of the piano. Sounds good. Sounds good. I like the way the way the dampers react to the piano, so it sounds very natural. Last thing that you you want to do, you may want to create a track stack, some sort of a you have a summing summing stack to make it like a one master track, and then you can call it it's called home piano, and you can save it on a new channel strip settings. And that's it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to visit tuneformedia.com. And I'll see you next tutorial. Thanks for watching.